a project that we did up at um, Croydon Shire Council. Three things I want you to take away is that small regional councils do it really tough. And the second thing is that uh, you know, not record keeping costs more than record keeping and it's a message we need to get out to everyone. And the last one is leaving, leaving hard copy appraisal jobs for too long leaves you with a really filthy job. So, um, so the journey starts in Caloundra, which is where our offices are. And uh, the Sunshine Coast is a nice place to live. This is actually the Siebel Hotel where we're having the conference at the end of the month. Um, so, but it's actually, if it's going to work, yeah, it's up in Croydon. Who knows where Croydon is? Who's been to Croydon? Yeah, so, yeah. Croydon's a really great town. It's, um, you know, we, we love going there. When we, when we get to work there. It's uh, really clean and tidy and you can really tell people take pride in the town. Um, the Caravan Park, which I can't quite see where it is there, but it's really one of the cleanest, tidiest caravan parks we've stayed in. The cabins are new and it's it's really a great place. About, uh, I think, 4K north is Lake Balmore. Um, that's the biggest freshwater um, reservoir in the in the region um, and it's great boating and fishing and we went up there to have a swim because as you know it's really hot <laughs> up there um, but this is what we saw when we got to the to the lake so I don't really understand why because it's landlocked it's just fed by freshwater creek there's no outlet to the ocean there's no estuary crops well that's yeah but you know but they're not, then, you know, a freshie's not really going to take too much interest in an old fellow like me. But we didn't, we didn't take a chance anyway. We, um, we gave that a miss. So back to Croydon. Um, have I got this? So uh, Croydon was established in the early 1880s. In 1885, they found gold. And by 1887, they had a population of 7,000. And they were the fourth biggest town in Queensland and 28 kilometres gold mine probably had something to do with that. Today, there's 300 people live in Croydon, um, and uh, they have a, a budget of between 12 and $13 million. 70% um, of that comes from grants and subsidies. 17% um, comes from the road maintenance performance contracts with the state and 5% comes from rates and charges. So there's not a lot of money coming in. The employee benefits budget is three and a half million dollars. And to put that in context, I know you all come from these regions. I mean, I know Kim's from South East Queensland, so it's like a little bit different for her, some of these stats, but when I was the manager of um, uh, information Knowledge Management of the Sunshine Coast Regional Council, the employee benefit budget for my unit alone is $3 million. So, and that was 10 years ago. So you can see, you know, just how, how hard they're doing it with the funding that they've got. Let's see where we're going from here. Okay. Actually, I might go back and point out here. Um, does that work? Yeah, there, that little spot there. So this is the administration building, the council administration building. This is the um, this is like a, a heritage precinct. It's really awesome. You go up there, they've got all the buildings from the 1980s, 1990s, and you can just walk through there um, freely any day of the week. Um, it's really, really interesting. And that's sort of across the road from the council building, which is there. And, oh, yep, yeah, there it is. And out the back here, uh, Got a, there's about, in the picture, I think, four or five shipping tanks. How many have we got now, Marty? Seven? A blue one. So seven or eight shipping containers, um, which look like that. So there's five there. So there's at least another two or three. And, you know, as they're filling their shipping containers up with records, they're buying another shipping container. 
And it's, it's pretty economical, really. It's about two or three thousand. I googled it, and I could buy a shipping container for two or three thousand. If I want to spend five thousand, I might get an air conditioned one. Um, they um, so that it's kind of good, but you know, it's it's really goes nowhere. If you're just going to keep buying shipping containers all the time, what's going to happen? The um, that's inside shipping container. Um, Croydon have re it's really clean and tidy, really neat. Uh, well, not neat, I wouldn't say. The shelving's sort of a bit. That one's not too bad, but but everything's clean, and you can you can get to the boxes. But I would really hate to go in there if I had to retrieve a hard copy had to, had to find one. So, but but that's it, it's pretty good. And even it's the middle of the day we were in there, I think, uh, and it wasn't that hot really, uh, considering what it was like outside. So, but this is the other place that they're keeping records. And this is the old town hall. And they want to refer, they're doing some work in there. They want to redo the picture projector, the picture theatre side of it. And they had three rooms in there that they wanted, um, that they had record stores in, and they wanted them moved out. So I could have bought another shipping container, but finally they sort of said, let's do something. Let's actually process these. Let's get rid of them if we don't have to have them. So. Over there. Sorry. So we went up before the project started, did an investigation, and um, we've done quite a few of these projects, and it's always really interesting. You don't know what you're going to get until you go in and open up the boxes. So some of the boxes had reports like this on the top. Does this look familiar to anyone? So does anyone had, have data worked at any stage? I think it's a, a data works report that's been printed out. Um, what was, where am I there? This one says it's about local laws, um, but if we have a look, you know, if, what's that recall, accidental first aid product, maybe laws, um, but you can see there's other stuff here. PCS newsletter, is that, that's the accounting system. So <laughs> um, we've got uh, the council planning scheme. Um, so I saw some tender stuff, but there's a lot of stuff in here which is really, I don't know, far stretched to really relate to local laws. So we couldn't open up and go, this is local laws. And even if we did, if you, the, you, you got very little chance that you're going to have exactly that in the box. So you really have to go and pull the box apart and investigate it. So uh, what we found when we went into the boxes and had a look is really they'd had at least three iterations of record keeping system. So one was really no system. There are lots of manila folders with um, a, a title on the front um, and sort of very um, work orientated. So whoever's doing the work, that was their folder, the work they were doing. Um, the next one we found was a system implemented that could lead you to the electronic copy once you had the hard copy in your hand. So we found that they wrote, and a lot of you do this, you write the ID, doc ID on the top right hand corner of the piece of paper. So we um, so went, okay, that's evidence to me that they're in an electronic system somewhere. But when we went to the electronic system, you could not come back. So this is where we've implemented a, a, a digital system that's working separate to the hard copy system. So. Um, we, we should be working the electronic, getting to the paper, not working the paper, and why would you want to go to the electronic? You've got it. And the last system, and this would be about the time that they got magic documents in, is a system that, in theory at least, linked the electronic to the hard copy. So there's a number written on it, but the, where the hard copy was stored was recorded in the EDRMS. So I guess, yet, yeah, it makes me think of digital transformation, and it's really interesting to see, you know, we talked about that uh, yesterday a bit, Going from paper base, which is everyone's comfortable with paper, then going to a system where we put in data works and we've got a digital EDRMS, but we're maintaining all the paper files. So as we're going through, and I know you've all had this in your systems as well, you print out email, you get an email, you print it out and add it to the file. Because for some reason we've got this electronic system, but everyone wants to work with the hard copy file. So we're maintaining all the digital information in the hard copy file. And we're really, we're running two, two record keeping systems. We're making so much extra work. We've got an electronic one which we're maintaining to reflect what we're actually maintaining in our paper one. And the last one is a digital system implemented, but you know, Marnie will agree that some files you're still maintaining the paper. So personnel files, they still print out anything born digital 
and out. So we're coming al along the way, but it's interesting to see how hard it is to actually do this digital transformation to let go of paper. Okay, so what we did in the rooms is we set up um, a time-lapse camera. We've taken, um, this is the first room that we did. We uh, took one frame every minute. So um, it took us about a week to get this room done. If you have a look, you can see the critters running around at night. <laughs> um, uh, that, this was the hardest room to do. This had a lot of um, stuff in it that wasn't really um, easy. It had to really be appraised in detail. Um, so, and this is, this is where we found um, that um, we had records from Info, that had been registered in InfoExpert, um, and we had to work out how to handle those. We had records that were uh, registered into DataWorks, um, and we had to work out how are we going to actually link the systems back up. Because the problem is you can't get rid of the paper. You're not compliantly disposing of anything if you get rid of the paper, but you keep the electronic. And you can't get rid of the electronic if you've kept the paper. And, you know, it, it's, so you think you've done the compliant disposal process, but you haven't. And it's all discoverable. So as soon as there's an RTI request, you've got to go, you've deleted all your electronic, maybe. You've got to go out in the back shed and have a look at all your paper. You know, and it's not a practical thing to do. People try and get out of it. So here's the sun coming up again. You see the, um, what we did, we got, so we're in there for a little while, because that's one second, uh, one frame a minute. So you see we're in there for a few minutes. We're getting the boxes, we get, we're pulling all the files out, we're dusting them off, getting all the rat scat, <laughs> all the feces, all the bugs, everything off it. You'll see that the floor gets messier and messier as time goes on. Uh, we clean it, then we pack them back in the boxes and then we're taking them. They gave us the boardroom, which was really great. So we had a nice air-conditioned room to do the work in. You sort of wonder if, it, if it's paused. It's night time again. Nope, the sun's come up again. <laughs> we're back into it. We wore um, back braces for this. I don't know if, you do, if you're doing this sort of work. Um, it is hard on your back, lifting archive boxes. Um, this is the first time we actually put back braces on and uh, it, it made a big difference to us. The um, other thing is that, um, what is it, leptospirosis? Is that the, you know, that's the disease that's transferred through rat urine, so, um, which is pretty nasty and that's probably our greatest fear going into there. Um, and you'll see why we're actually putting hand cleanser in our promotional <laughs> bags. So we're addicted to hand cleanser now. It's a really important part of record keeping as far as I'm concerned. Sun's up again. We do. Oh, he works quick. What about me? Were you there too? All right. I was there too. There's actually three of us on this job in a couple of... Okay, there we are, CIM there. So it's, uh, this is actually the end, um, but as Jan pointed out to me, you need so many frames to make a second, so we've, it, half an hour, so it kind of finished with, without an empty room. Okay, now this is the second room that we did. So, and this was a great room to do because it was uh, a lot more straightforward. We pulled everything out, we put it in, um, in piles of rel related stuff. There's a lot of financial stuff, so a lot of you know, purchase order books. Uh, there were um, wages runs, pay runs. Um, what other stuff did we have in there? Yeah. Uh, check vouchers. Check vouchers, all that sort of, sort of easy stuff. Um, so we pulled them all out, put them in, in uh, Groups, Russell and I are in the boardroom doing the hard work, and Jan's here on his own, powering through all these boxes. <laughs> so he's going through, he's checking that what's in every box is what should be every box. He's um, looking up um, the R&D authority and the retention periods. He's putting them into a, a, um, a program. He says there's a little printer there, so we print out a, an appraisal label 
that we stick on top of each either uh, file, if they're files, if it's a box of all the same stuff, we just put it on the box. Uh, everything that he's deemed is due for disposal, we're taking into another room out the back. Every now and then he takes off. Okay, so he's just taken a bunch of boxes to us. And that's because he's opened those boxes up and he has found numbers written on them. He's going, oh, I can't process these. So they have to go into the other office. Now he's on lunch. <laughs> he's got a good lunch. He did not leave his computer locked. <laughs> that's a security breach, isn't it? <laughs> no, I, I can see he's been playing patience. Here he's back. <laughs> How am I going for time? Still a bit of time? Good. Um, yeah, All right, we're not going to make it. Get through. He is fast. That's one day. That's one day. Yep. He's packed up down the Croydon Hotel, <laughs> which is one of the best hotels in Queensland. It's our favourite pub, isn't it? Lovers. Did not too many of those old style Queensland pubs left, that's one of them. Okay, this is in the, in the boardroom. So what we have, um, Russell is sitting there. We, we do software development as well, as you know. We do a um, uh, product of utilities that integrate with magic documents and we have a, a RIM knowledge platform called InfoVantage, which we keep all our record management knowledge in. Uh, and uh, that's what we do to look up. That's we put search for key terms, we find the record class and then we get the R&D and can work out how long to keep them for. Uh, and that's a commercially available product. Um, Russell, is, we've got another product that's not commercially available which we call Crew, which is the Courtman Records Unit. And that's what um, Russell, uh, we're all using that to print out these labels and stick on the, the front. Um, and then at the end we can sort of print out a whole um, report that says this is what we destroyed. So we keep all that, that destruction metadata. So, but what Russell's doing is he's going through all these records of numbers written on the top. He's using our crew product to look up magic documents and find the document, bring up the image, confirms it's the same one, goes yes, tells it what box he's putting it in and it updates the, the box number in the system. Um, so they're all the boxes behind him that he's doing there. Over here is where we've got ephemeral, with boxes of ephemeral. Um, documents that we could just, you know, note, we can just throw their copies, things like that. <coughs> I think we've got six boxes of that out of all the boxes. So that was really, really good. Most places we go to, it's all ephemeral. People have been keeping tons, over 150. half. 150 boxes of ephemeral when we did the Concorry product, uh, project. Because people are, who was talking about Joe's desk? Oh, Iron Mountain, let's talk about Joe's desk, putting in a box, Joe's desk, in a box, Joe's desk, they put it in an Iron Mountain, Iron Mountain go, Judy, I'm getting money for the rest of, until the, the, the end of time, um, and no one knows what's in there, and it's just the desk contents, heaps of that sort of stuff. So over here, that pile there is the over, over 25 year old um, records that we found. They're due for destruction, uh, and as you're all familiar with Section 10 of the Act, recently we were told to tell our permanent records that are over 25 years old. Well, you actually have to tell them of your temporary records too. The Act does say it doesn't stop disposal. So you're still allowed to dispose of them, so it has no stop on disposal, but you do need to let Queensland State Archives know that you had these records over 25. So to be compliant with the Act, we separated those out and um, did a sent a report to QSA about those. It was just after that that we got the the email from State Archivist saying, where are all your 25 year old records? So maybe we sparked that, I don't know. Um, they're the ones that are to be destroyed. And then behind Yun, there's a pile of boxes that have to be registered. So they're permanent records, uh, which we can't send to the QSA because they're connected to the EDRMS. So we want to send them to QSA through the EDRMS uh, or they haven't been registered at all. So, so there's a lot of work to split those out. This is the last room. I think you've shown this at a curing meeting. This one uh, with a pretty bad room. You'll see that doesn't move. We've given up. 
in the boardroom, we, no matter how much we tried, at times my mouse wouldn't work on the table because there was so much mouse feces that the mouse pad, the mouse was rolling over the top of it, wouldn't connect with the table. So that box gets left for last. I think Russell was hoping we were just going to dump that. But it's good to be boss. <laughs> I don't have to touch it. Mary, you'll see soon a little lizard come up there. I am mean, running out of time, so I'm just, how much time? I'm going to move on. Yep. A bit, yep. So this is what we ended up. We destroyed uh, 46 boxes of over 25-year-old records, uh, the 128 boxes of records that are under 25 years. Orphaned records, these are records that we found kind of just lying loose and that sort of thing that really they need to probably digitise and put them in the system and reprocess them. There's only one box of those. Um, this Russell updated 26 boxes of records to relink to connect the electronic copy with the, with the physical copy. Um, so we can actually use magic documents to our disposal now. And we had uh, that 40, is it, that's, no, there, that's it, six boxes that required registration. And yeah, six boxes of, of um, ephemeral stuff, which we could also destroy. So, okay, so the following scenes may cause offence or be disturbing to some viewers. So, just if you don't, if your stomach, you've just had breakfast, you might want to look away. So, this is one of the things, yeah, this is the number written on the top. You go in on the little buggies and things. Of, so, even though you're doing your best to connect them to your electronic copy, the bugs will come in and stop you. The bug, that's a lot of bug stuff there and you know, and the rats have been, the mice have been in having a good feed on these documents. So what do you do with those? Like, well we can identify them and fortunately they were right to go. A lot of them were right to go. So we just documented the, the record class and all the disposal metadata and you know we just kept the record of destruction. So lucky, yeah. In this case we were very lucky. But if you've got stuff like that QSA is the best place to go to get advice on how to preserve your damage and, and re restore your damaged records. Um, yeah, so this is that's a like that is just uh, yeah. See the stuff up here. This is like rat scat, and that's all mouse. So here's a little here's a little lizard coming out. There he is, coming out to say hello. Uh, yeah, some more stuff. Like, there, there was a date on this. This is 1980, so, you know, it can go. We just have to, um, you know, list it as an over 25-year-old record, but, yeah, it could go. Bugs, that's just bugs, bugs and, and mouse poo. This is where we say, honestly, I don't know what we're seeing here. Um, I think it was a rat nest, to be honest. Um, there's you know, like hair and um, it's really, you know, cringe. And that's why we use a lot of hand sanitizer now. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's like, whoa. You know, you wouldn't even know what, where to start appraising that one. That, I can't even tell you what that is. You know, that's in the box. It's... Um, yeah, what is that? Those all, yeah, it, it's, you know. So um, oh, this is just so of my other presentation. We're flying off to Burke Town. I'm going to get Shanae's coming. Yeah, we, uh, Jeanine was sponsored to come down for the uh, symposium last year. This year we've got Shanae coming down, so she's going to get up on stage with me and talk a bit about life in um, Burke Town. And that's pretty much it. So the, the things there that I'm trying to get across is that small remote councillors do it hard. They don't have the finances. I didn't talk about the recruitment, you know, the turnover of staff. You get the low budgets combined with turnover of staff and long recruitment processes, no handover, no skill sets, no training. Um, they're doing it really hard to do record keeping. Um, the, what was the other one that I wanted to tell you about? They do it hard. Oh yeah, it costs more. These are the expensive projects. If you do this as you go, 
and you're destroying stuff as you go and managing it as you go, it's a lot cheaper than you think buying another container and another container and another container and finally someone says, we've got to do something about that. And the last thing is that these jobs are really filthy, so if you want to avoid dirty work, record keep properly. Thank you.